Well, g'day guys, and welcome back to another David Maxfield Golf video, where today we are going to be talking all things Spornia in relation to your Garmin R10 and the best home portable setup that I believe money can buy. So this is a solution which is, uh, if you're like me, where you've got a garage and you can sort of swing up to a three or a four iron, but you don't have enough room for a driver, so I'm out here on the deck. Uh, Spornio offers a great solution where you can use a net in the garage and then you can fold it down, you can set it back up out here like you've seen in so many of my videos, but you can literally take it anywhere. So I believe that this is the best portable home simulator solution on the market and we're going to run you through a bunch of products that Spornio offer um, that you can use to complement your Garmin R10 and help increase your, uh, your practice levels and decrease your scores and get a better golf game overall. So I'm going to start with a net. Um, as if you haven't seen before already, make sure you go and check out my full review of the Spornia net. But there's just a couple of things that I wanted to touch on which people have brought up as common questions such as wedges and that sort of thing into the height. And uh, let's get into that and I'm going to show you. Righty, so one of the things that people have brought up is they've asked questions such as, is the net high enough to hit full wedges? So full sand wedges or full lob wedges, they want to make sure that it doesn't go over the top. So I'm standing here to help illustrate that I'm actually six foot four. So my height is just there, and if I reach my hand up, which is probably, I don't know, guessing 10 feet, that's the top of the wedge catcher here on the net. So you can see that there's a pole that runs through that wedge catcher, and I often will bring the mat right to the edge, and I'll even practice my flop shots, which hit this. But just to demonstrate, I'm going to sit the camera back, and I'm going to hit some full wedge shots into this, so you can see uh, that it is plenty high enough to keep your wedge shots. Now, obviously, if you really want to try and shoot it over the top, you can. It even gives you a flop shot competition if you want to take it somewhere and see if you can do that. It's great fun. Um, but for conventional wedge shots where you're actually trying to hit them, you know, a lob wedge maybe 70 meters, 75 meters, something like that for me, um, this is perfect. So I'm going to put the camera back, I'm going to hit some wedge shots and uh, see how we go. Okay, so hopefully I'm in shot. I've got you guys nice and close and I'm just taking a quick look. Yep, you can see the top of that wedge catching net there. So I'm going to put the ball down. I've got the Garmin R10 set up. I may need to wake it up. Looks like I do. We've got the very first shot of the day. Lob wedge in here. We're going to try and hit it to 83 metres. I don't necessarily hit it that far, but it's as full as it's going to get for me. Got that one a, a touch thin, so that's why it actually kind of did get there. I'm just trying to hit really full shots for you guys so you can see that the height of this thing is plenty enough. I mean, I didn't even get near that wedge catcher then. One more. There we go. That's more like I would have expected. Oh, nearly hold out too. Okay, so maybe I can get there when I actually really give it a good crack. But as you can see, they're full wedge shots. Now, if I'm trying to do a, a slot shot, I hit it up to that spawnier height. Pretty good and if I wanted to really do like a uh, around the green kind of flop shot which this is definitely intended to be short and really so I've got that face basically open to the sky okay and did we hold out this then 0.3 meters I thought we hold out that was a dang good shot Anyway, as you can see, it's the, the point that I'm trying to show you guys is that I can hit full wedge shots and I'm still really only hitting kind of here and even below. I can hit flop shots and I haven't even actually hit that top bit yet. It's gotten close, but I haven't hit that top bit. So I've still got two and a half or three feet, whatever the span of that, that wedge catcher is there, um, to actually get wedge shots in. So that's the net, that's a wedge catcher. I have done full reviews on the net before. If you haven't, I'll link it in the description below. And, uh, and check it out. For anyone who didn't know about the net as well, it comes with this white sheet. So you can see the black one there, which is the one that I always use. But it also comes with a white sheet, and that can replace that. So if you have a projector, you can project onto this white sheet, and you can be hitting into it, and you can see your awesome golf app in the background as you're hitting shots, and you can play directly looking at your, uh, at your net there as a projector. So you don't have to have an impact screen or anything like that. You can have a projector projecting onto this in more of a fixed location and then you have the ability to take it down and take it anywhere at any time and use it. 
Alrighty now, the next thing guys is probably my favorite addition that's only just come to me now, which is this. It is the chipping net from Spawnia. So the chipping net, basically the setup is the exact same. You've got these two little poles just there, which go on the side to help keep it, you know, sturdy. Um, and then you've got three chipping holes to make sure that you can, you know, either fly them low, fly them medium, fly them high. And you can even go on left and right, which I kind of like because that helps your alignment with your chipping. If you're trying to chip to the right side of the green because there's a slope or the left side because there's a slope, you've got these holes which you can chip into as well. Um, and you can take this off completely and you can put it back on, which I really like. But even more, this actually complements the Spawnia net because it has a place in the net where it can sit inside it. And I'll show you guys that right now. So didn't see it just before you'll see it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this little velcro tab that's here and I'm going to put this velcro tab straight over the chipping net like so sorry my back is turned to you guys just putting that velcro tab in there undo this velcro tab on this side put it across there and then what you're going to see I'm just going to move the camera back but if I can try and just do a little chip with it now into the bottom one I've got the middle one and then if I try and go to the bottom one which is actually the trickiest one for me missed it let's go to the top one <laughs> we'll try and go to the top one got the top one and so we can see that I can find the middle and the top quite easy but I can't necessarily find the bottom so Where's my practice going to be? There's the bottom there. And the beauty about this is you can take this anywhere, right? So you can take it anywhere that you want to go. It's easy to fold down. It folds into this tiny, tiny little bag. This thing right here is a tiny little bag that it folds into. Okay? Um, now we'll go to the right side, obviously. So I'm trying to fit around something. Just got the right side. And so you can see how this can add to your practice. Now the Spawnia net does come with a chipping net as well. So, and you can sit this in, which I've used quite a lot. Um, and this is really great for chipping. But what I like this net for is it sits in the bottom here. So if I want to be hitting some irons or if I want to be hitting some wedges, you know, like I just have, which is say 28 meters. And, and if I deliberately try and miss that 28 meter green, um, Oh, the Garmin might have gone off. But if I deliberately try and miss that 28 meter green, I can then practice just trying to get up and down and chipping into these little holes here. And it just varies the practice. Awesome. Okay, now the next thing, which I find super, super cool, the pitch mat, right, or the strike mat. Basically, you wipe it one way, it's gonna go smooth. You wipe it the other way, you're gonna see a whole bunch of marks on it. So what this is gonna show, they call it a strike indicator, is that you can put this on your mat and then when you're hitting shots or you're trying to even learn how to shape shot, you can see what your club path is doing when you're striking the ball. You can see whether you're hitting it thin, whether you're hitting it fat, whether you're hitting the right point of contact, whether your club path is going the right way for a draw or a fade or whatever. Um, so I've got that set up. Let's hit it. And let's use a strike indicator here. Make sure that it's straight, okay? Sometimes I hit it and it's not straight. You want it straight so that you can see where your club path has actually gone. And let's just try and hit a conventional shot. That was struck really nicely. I can see that my club path is awesome, so I hope this recording doesn't stop on here. But I'm going to try and get a photo of that. Okay, so you can see that that was really a, a very straightish ball flight, um, and you can see that from the uh, from the strike mat there, the face of path is, is pretty much dead straight. The club path is dead straight. The ball is dead straight and the strike path on the strike mat reflects that. So let's now go and try and hit some kind of a fade. All right, so let's hit some kind of a fade, not really caring about distance or accuracy or anything like that. It's just an illustration. Let's go fade. Okay, so as you can see, the club path is from out to in, we've got a beautiful baby fade there. And if we look at the strike mat, you can take a photo of 
the club part actually going across the ball um, left to right. So, sorry, right to left, out to in. Whichever way you want to say it, it's going to make sense. Okay, so we've got a straight shot, we've got a beautiful fade, and now let's try and hit the draw, which on course for me is uh, almost a natural shot, but I think what I see on course is more of a slight pull, I'm being completely honest, as opposed to a pure draw. Alright, so there we go, we've got a beautiful little draw, um, and it's all but one yard that draw, and a, and a great strike mind you, um, absolutely smoked that one obviously getting warmed up but when I take a photo and when I look at this now I can see that I've hit a draw and it's showing me the club path which is exactly reflecting the club path that is on the awesome golf app so kudos to them there the next thing that I'm going to show you guys is these things so these are basically what they call a tee claw again from Spornia you can buy it from their website I'm going to link all of these things in the description below and this comes like this um, with, a, with a couple of extras so comes with a little string comes also with your tee claw you just wind this into your mat and you attach this tee claw to the tee so you attach this little thing on the bottom it's not going to lose it anywhere and then you can kind of you can pin this down on the ground so if you hit the tee claw it's not going to go flying I'm just going to tuck it under the mat so I'm going to tuck it under the mat like so and then I'm going to wind the T-claw in, probably a little close to be honest but that's alright, I'm going to wind the T-claw into the mat so it's just, it's just going to grab, it's going to save me doing what I have been doing which is basically I drilled a small hole and then put the T in that way um, but this is grabbed into that mat. I'm going to now get a T. So I'm going to grab a three wood and basically just have a hit at it just as I normally would at the range around course. Very much a loose warm up of the three wood, but that's the T claw. You can grab it, you can obviously adjust the T height by using different T's, and you can see that it's obviously going to stick in the ground, it's going to be quite sturdy. I can put that lower and then have a bit more of a crack at it. So the T can go flying if it wants to, but your T claw is still going to be here and it's attached to the string. So happy days with the T claw. And pretty good distance, 246 total with a three wood. I'll take that every time. All right, the final piece of the puzzle today, guys, and one that I'm actually really, really excited. I mean, I'm excited about all of these products, right? Um, and I just enjoy working on my game. I enjoy using products and technology to help my game because it's available and I can use it. And one of these is definitely gonna help do that. So if you're familiar with Tiger's nine windows that he looks at with his irons and his wedges, this is gonna help you do that. So it looks like a target. You might be thinking, the net's already got a target. Yes, it does, but this is movable. So you can get one of these and you can set it up on this side, that side. You can set it up low, in the middle, left right whatever you want to do this is going to help you do that so let's do that i'm going to set it up on one side and then on the other see if i can hit the target with the seven iron so or, or i shouldn't just say a lower seven iron i should say a lower iron such as an eight iron or a seven iron or, or anything but flighting it low pop that back so flighting it low so now you can see what this has done i'm more about tinkle what this has done is it's given me a different target, a little bit right, and what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to just push one a little bit low, almost like kind of a lengthy slingshot um, from the right hand side. And that was really good. That didn't get that on there, oh it did. So I'm able to now practice hitting those punch shots and you can see the strike indicator on this, which is right there. So I've hit it just there, got a little bit of room to go higher, but that was where the ball hit, and it's going to give you feedback to show you whether you hit your target or not. Now, from there, 
All right, so I've dropped that now really low. You can see that it's, it's, it's low right, and what I'm sort of looking at is I'm looking for a low punch shot, maybe out of the trees, maybe something to go around something. Maybe you even want to put it in the middle and you want to practice your stingers. This time, I'm just trying to practice a low punch seven iron. That's pretty good too. I can see the strike indicator there. It's just left of my target. The target's obviously in the middle, but I hit the right distance, the right height, sorry. Um, and then, of course, everyone wants to practice a stinger, so let's do a stinger. All right, so we've got that set up, and now what we're gonna do is we are going to, oh yeah, there you go. So the uh, awesome golf hat got that anyway um, in that little shot, but now we're gonna do what everyone wants to do, hit stingers, all right? So I've got a three iron, basically, not really lined up for that, but anyway, let's try. And we're going to try and hit a stinger. And we're going to keep it low and see if we can aim for about that 185 meter mark with this three iron on a stinger with roll out. I don't know if that actually went under. That might have gone under. Who knows, but I missed it. So again, that kind of goes to the point of the practice. Um, 85 and we'll go three iron so we know we're hitting stingers. All right, stinger. Let's keep it low. Get to that one, one kind of 85 number. That was hit really well. And we can see the flight path there. Nice and low, bullet-like stinger. That's probably gonna roll out to that 185 number. 4.1, perfect. And again, it's more practice that you can do with this kind of stuff. So I could literally, because I'm on a links course, I could sit out here for hours just practicing those stinger shots and working out exactly how far every single one of my irons goes by punching it under the wind. Because I'm always into the wind and I'm always trying to guess how far can I hit this iron or that iron. Should I be a five iron or a four iron or what shot should I play? This helps. How good is that? How good is the Spawnier range for everybody that's using a Garmin R10? It is awesome and it's really going to help improve your game. I'll put the links in the description below. Make sure you check them out. It is the golf simulator that you can literally take anywhere, anytime and have it with you. And it all fits in small bags. I showed you the, uh, uh, the tiny little the, the chipping net and you've already seen the other one in the other review. How small the actual big net folds down and it's so sturdy. You've seen me on driver reviews, hit it in cyclones. It'll hold up to anything. It comes with T pegs as well to peg, peg it into the ground. spawnier has got you covered. Make sure you check them out. And, uh, and purchase some stuff for yourself. So, guys, that's me for today. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and I'll see you on the next video. I really appreciate all your support, and uh, yeah, see what we got next time.